In the previous video, we've learned that there's two types of permutations in SN. There's even permutations, those that can be factored as an even product, that is a product of an even amount of transpositions, two cycles, and odd permutations, those permutations can be factored as a odd number of transposition factors. And you can't get both, right? Uh, we use an argument using the determinant. So we're going to take the set of a sub n, and we're going to call this the set of even permutations in Sn. The reason why we call it a sub n is that this is known as the alternating group on n letters. Now, why do we call it the alternating group? Why not the alternating set? Well, it's because this subset is in fact a subgroup of n. And there's a couple ways of seeing that. Uh, the one argument I really like, based upon the previous proof, we basically saw that with the language of permutation matrices, the alternating group consists of permutation matrices with the determinant equal to one. Therefore, the alternating group would be the intersection of the permutation group inside of the general linear group with the special linear group. And the intersection of two subgroups is a subgroup, right? So there's a lot of stuff we haven't proven about matrix groups yet. So we'll try a more elementary approach. N is a subgroup of N. So imagine we have two transpositions, uh, S and uh, sigma and tau, excuse me. Well, if these are even uh, even permutation sigma can they be factored as a product of two s mini transpositions and tau can be factored as a product of two t mini transpositions so th then when we consider the product sigma and tau well sigma will give us two s mini transpositions tau will give us two t mini transpositions and when you put all of those together uh, list there you're going to get two times s plus t mini transpositions so the product will then be an even trans, an even permutation. So we took like an even amount right here and then we concatenated with an even amount right here. So you had 2s, 2t. So collectively, you're gonna get two times s plus t. There you go. So the alternating group is closed under multiplication. Um, we've also talked about previously that the identity is an even permutation. Right, we can multiply it as the product of two transpositions. Personally, I like to think of it as the product. If you don't like that argument, we can also say two. That works great. So, what about inverses? Right. Well, if you have sigma, if the sigma has a factorization as sigma one, sigma two, up to sigma two s, then the inverse of this permutation by the Shusok principle will be the product of all of these same transpositions in reverse order, and you take all of their inverses. This is the Shusok principle. But transpositions are their own inverses, they're order two. And so you see that sigma inverse will likewise be a product of 2s mini transpositions. And therefore, because again, transpositions are equal to their own inverses. So this then shows that the alternating group is closed under multiplication, identity, and inverses of Sn. How big is the alternating group? So recall that we were previously that Sn, we just proved this as a set argument, right? Just a combinatorial argument. We, even before we had a theory, we proved that the size of Sn is going to be in factorial. You'll get in factorial many permutations. We will see that with the exception of n equals 1, when n is greater than or equal to 2, because when, when, when you just take S1, this is just the trivial group itself, which is actually equal to the, identity, the alternating group, so there's no distinction there. So throughout this, this argument, it, n will be greater than or equal to 2 here. We're going to show that half of the symmetric group is even, thus the alternating group has its, its order in factorial divided by 2. This is going to be a nice combinatorial argument because what we're going to do is going to, we're, going to be the, we're going to do the following. So we're going to introduce another set, b sub n, which is going to be the set of all odd permutations. Now notice b sub n is not going to be a subgroup of Sn because it doesn't contain the identity, which is an even permutation. All right, the odd permutations b sub n, what we're going to do is we're going to find a, a function between a sub n, b sub n. And what this is going to be is the map that sigma will be mapped to sigma times one, this two cycle one, two. And so what this is called in group theory, this map right here is called the translation map. Translation by one, two. Or you could, or sometimes they call this the, the right multiplication map. So we just multiply on the right by this element one comma two right here. That's all that we're doing here. And so there's gonna be some consequences of that. First of all, right multiplication is, and we're here. So notice that you're going from 
as you're going from a n to b n sigma the element of the domain is going to be an even permutation notice that this does work out though because if sigma is an even permutation it has a factorization with an even number of permutations adding uh transpositions excuse me adding one more two cycle then increase the number of transpositions in the factorization by one you go from even to odd so this is going to be an odd permutation so this is a well-defined map this map is going to be one to one all right how do we see that well suppose there were two two permutations tau and sigma they're even permutations which have the same image all right so these are actually things that are going to be an an we could say that even better i mean although this statement's true in general these are going to be permutations in an well if you times both sides on the right by one two we could cancel that this is a group right we're in sn so in a group you can cancel out the one two and so this would give you that sigma equals tau uh, and so this is a one-to-one -one map. And so this in general shows us that right multiplication by any element is, is a one-to-one -one map. So if you have any group, right, you have a you want a function from G to G right here. And let's have a specific element X inside of G, which then sends G to GX. This map's going to be one-to-one, -one, right? Because if you have GX is equal to HX, then you can cancel out the X's and get that G equals H. Right multiplication, likewise, left multiplication is a one-to-one -one map, all right? I also want to argue that it's onto. Why is it onto in this situation? Well, if we take rho inside of bn, that means it's an odd permutation. If I add another two cycle to the factorization of rho, that would make it an even permutation because it's 2k plus 1 plus 1, so 2k plus 2. Then, so row one, two is an even permutation. What's the image of row one, two? The image would be row one, two, one, two, but one, two cancels out, you just end up with row. So this shows you that in fact, you're an onto, uh, it's an onto function. And I want to show that this is actually something we can kind of do in general. If you have right multiplication, um, if you want to land on H, basically you're just going to start off with G X inverse, and then you times it on the right by X, right? Uh, not not g sorry this this here should be a g so if you take gx inverse times x that's equal to g so this right multiplication is an onto map uh, so i should mention right multiplication and left multiplication is a bijection from a group onto itself it's going to be an important bijection but what we've done is actually something a little bit more specialized so, so multiplication by one two is a bijection on sn to sn but we've also argued that if you start with an even permutation then the output will be odd so we've now shown that this map f is a bijection from a n to b n this is a bijection and this is this is the critical combinatorial fact whenever you have a bijection between finite sets this means that their cardinalities are the same it's, i mean it's also true for infinite sets i mean that's actually how we essentially define cardinality uh, two sets have the same cardinality if there exists a bijection between them. This is extremely... And so whenever you try to make a counting argument, this is something you should consider. Can we find a bijection between two sets? Because then the two sets will have the same cardinality. But the problem is I want to count the number of elements in AN. If I knew the number of elements of BN, we'd be done, but we don't know either of those. But we do know they're the same. So now we're going to cover to SN. We're going to bootstrap off of our knowledge of SN right here. So what we see is the following. We've learned previously that every element of Sn is either even or odd, but not both. So Sn is the union of An and Bn, but it is a disjoint union because there's nothing that belongs to both. And so since Sn is a disjoint union of An, the size as a set of Sn will be the size of An plus the cardinality of Bn. But as these two sets are the same thing, this becomes two times the cardinality of An divide both sides by two. You then get that half of the symmetric group is the alternating group. Since the symmetric group has order in factorial, the order of the alternating group then becomes in factorial. So in the remaining minutes of this video, let's look over a specific example. If we look at A3, uh, A4, so this would be the alternating group on four letters. This should be a group of 12 elements. It should be four factorial divided by two. Four factorial is 24, of course. And I've actually listed the uh, 20 of uh, the 12 even permutations. There's 24 permutations in S4. I listed the, the 12 even permutations. There's the identity. 
Um, there's going to be three cycles. Three cycles are, in fact, e are even because the three cycle, one, two, three, can be factors one, two, times two, three. And this is true for all three cycles. So three cycles are going to be even. And there's also two, two, two cycles. That is, those functions, uh, those permutations, which are written as a product of two disjoint transpositions. Now, if you want to count these things, there's only one identity. That's pretty clear. In terms of the two, two cycles, um, what here is going to happen is there's going to be four choose. Uh, let's let's think about this. Basically, if you want to count the two, two cycles, you have to decide who's going to go with one. Because you have a two, two cycle, you have a one, you have a blank, and then you have these other guys right here. So you have to decide who goes with the blank. So there's some choice right here um, of X. But whoever goes with one, then the other two elements, Y and Z, will have to be paired together. And the order doesn't matter because it's just a two cycle. So there's going to give you three options for the two, two cycles. So we see all three of them right here. There's one, two, and three, four. There's one, three, and two, and four. And then there's one, four, and two, three. Right? So there's three, two cycles right there. Um, in terms of... Let's see, in terms of, what do I want to say next? If you were to count transpositions, right? In S4, the number of transpositions there are going to be, as transposition, you just have two elements, A and B, which if we count those, let's see, you got to pick who goes in the first one, you got to pick in the second one, but the order doesn't matter. You're counting, excuse me, you're counting the cycles you have four total and you have to choose two for a two cycle that gives you four choose two which is going to be six so there's six uh transpositions that are in s4 so if we kind of keep track of these things so we have this one identity we have these three two two cycles kind of keep all of the cycle structures one identity um if you count two cycles i better do odd ones in like red two cycles there's going to be six of those if we do two two cycles uh there's three of them like we just counted the next thing to can count would be three cycles which are even uh according to the list right here it looks like it should be eight um how do we get this eight figure basically you have the following for a two two cycle um you have to decide who's not going to be in there so you're gonna get four options for the element who's going to be fixed and then of the remaining next of, of the remaining elements, pick the smallest one to go in the first spot. We get a one. And then you have to decide who comes next. And so there's two options for who comes next, first and last. So you get four times two. So there's gonna be eight uh three cycles. Again, like we see here on the screen. Uh next, you can't, I mean three one cycle is just a three cycle. And since there's only four, the only thing left will be four cycles, which four cycles are going to be odd permutations. And so, I mean, we could actually try and count what's left, but when it comes to the four cycles, basically you could always put one first and then who's the next one, who's the next one, who's the next one. Um, you're gonna get three factorial options right there, which is likewise six. So we should get six options for our four cycles. And so if we put these together, you'll notice that six and six gives you 12, which is how many we expected for BN, because it should be the same side as, as AN. And then if you have one and three, that's four with another eight, that's 12. So that counts all of them. That gives us all 24 right there. Just kind of see how these things broke up by their types. Uh, a, the A4 though, of course, will have the ones, the, the identity, the two, two cycles, and then the three, the three cycles there. 